In this video, I'll be showing you the advantages of using GitHub Desktop over the command line. Yeah, you heard me, I don't love the command line. Most people see GitHub Desktop as simply a beginner's tool only. I couldn't disagree more. Yeah, you do need to know the command line, but there's some things where I think the desktop app is just way better. It's available for both Windows and Mac, made by GitHub.com, and it looks like this. Take the commit process. Using the command line, you're going to go open your file and you're going, hmm, I'm going to make some change. Then you do a save file. Then you open the repository in the command line. You do a git status to see, hey, did my files actually get updated? And you do a git add dash a. Then you do a git commit. Then you type in a message, press enter. You do a git push origin master. And of course I spelled it wrong, or Igin master. Now on the command line, you might have to enter your password depending on if you cloned it by HTTPS or SSH. That's the process you probably all know. It's not super complicated and you get used to it, but I find it's a lot of typing, potential for mistakes, and I don't find it that nice. I'm gonna make a new change and overwrite that old change. Go into GitHub Desktop. And what do you know? My cursor is sitting right here in the summary tab. This is the commit message title. I'm gonna be sloppy with my commit messages today. And you can tell right here, this is the thing I really want to emphasize. It tells you exactly in the form that you're familiar with github.com what files were changed with the red and green. So if you have a ton of files and you're like, hmm, which file did I change? You can look through and find exactly where it is. Occasionally this live preview on the right doesn't update. And in that case, you could always revert to doing a git status in the command line or just save the file again. It usually updates then. Now I think this is way easier than doing git diff because although it may be simple with like a few files, if you have tons and tons of changes, navigating the command line can be super annoying. And this graphical way of saying, oh, here's a file, and here's exactly what I did. If I'm in the commit message, I can press enter to commit to master. Instead of doing a git push, you just press sync. This pushes and pulls. You can also press alt s on Windows. I've heard that F5 works, but I haven't gotten that to work. This site seems to think the command P will do a push and command up P will do a pull, but I haven't gotten that to work because I have a Windows computer, but alt s always works. And now if you go review your commits, this is the old page and I refresh. What do you know? Here's the commit that I made to the command line, and here's the new desktop app one. Wasn't that easier to do? Multiple files. New line in one file, new line in another file. Go over here. If I hadn't pressed the sync button, my cursor would still be right here in the summary tab. I could be new files, press enter, alt s, and I'm done. With multiple files, let's say if you had a bunch of lines that you changed and messed up, you can cycle through them right here and see, look, red line, change, green line, addition and you can go see exactly what you did. You can include the files with a check mark, or say you wanted to commit one in one commit. First file, enter. Now I want to include the second file. Second file. You can even create a partial commit. So you added a bunch of lines. I'm just doing a dummy example here. The complete check mark means you want to include all these changes, but it goes in line by line and says, do you want to include this change? You can click it to exclude that from the commit. Now, do I want to? No, I want to keep that. But say I wanted to exclude the bottom part, I clicked and dragged, and now I'm going to click and drag and include the top part of the file. Notice how my check mark over here changed from a solid check to a different kind of symbol. I can do top, and now look at my changes. The only changes left are the bottom of the file. Say if I wanted everything but that last line, it's kind of tricky, you have to like click and unclick again, but there I've made the middle part of the file, but I'm just going to do all the file for the bottom commit, and there you have it. Looking at history, you see the first commit, it only changed those first four lines. And then you look at the bottom, it changed those lines. This page here gives you like the legend about what the little dots mean. So the hollow circle at the end means you haven't committed and you haven't pushed these. The solid dots are ones in the past which have gone to the remote, and then the other symbol is for merging. When there's no local changes, you can open this repository in Windows Explorer just in case you forgot, oh wait a minute, I have so many repositories, where exactly do I put it on the computer? And you can also get to that same way by right clicking in the repository and left, and open and explore. I'm going to make a new folder, and then I'm going to just copy two files into that new folder. Now they're going to appear as changes, but what if I didn't want that file to be included? I can right click and ignore the file. Notice what did that do? It updated the git ignore right for you. You can also say ignore all txt files, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to actually go into tools and options and repository settings. This way you can look at the git ignore directly. I'm just going to ignore everything inside that folder. Press OK, and what do you know? It's changed the git ignore, and my files are ignored, and they still exist right here. Back in the repository settings, there's not much you can do other than change the remote, so say you want to switch from HTTPS to SSH, or if you had it stored on a different account. But I really like the live update of git ignore. Say if I made a bunch of changes to a text document, and I go back here and I say, hmm, I didn't actually mean to change that file. I'm going to want to go back to the way it was in the last commit. You can right click and say, 
discard changes, kind of equivalent to a git reset or git checkout branch to force checkout or git clean, but it's a little easier in my opinion to do it in the desktop app. Now this program is not just for github.com. I've used it with GitLab and pretty much any Git repository will be able to be recognized through this app and give you more graphical way to interact with your repository and your commits. I think it's just amazingly easy to do commits in this app. It also works for any repository you have on the computer. I'm just going to clone one. Go back into my GitHub folder and do a git clone. And as you can see, I have a new folder, this dummy repository. Of course, it's interactive with the command line as always, but if I want to use it here, all I have to do is drag and drop. And what do you know? It recognizes all your previous commits and it works exactly the same. Up here are buttons to add to do the same thing, which basically means look on your computer for an existing repository to import, but I think drag and drop is easier. Create, you just choose where you want to save it, and you can make it git ignore for Windows, or you could say no git ignore. And clone, of course, this connects directly to your GitHub account and makes it even easier to clone stuff down. The only thing that's kind of annoying is same in the changes tab right here and I go switch back to another repository I go switch back to the first one it's back to the history tab. Minor minor annoyance. Speaking of the history tab you can just look here what files did I actually change in that commit a few minutes ago? See it's two. That means you can click here and see the files you changed. You can switch between them and you can click the entire commit and expand individual files or expand and collapse all. You can also view the commit on github.com and that shows you the commit history. And navigating the history like this is way better to doing git log, which I find is a complete pain. But this way you can check like, oh wait a minute, is this file you can cycle through the commits before you even push them because all these are not pushed, you can fix them before you sync. Now the other thing is revert commit. I'm not a big fan of this because what happens is unable to revert commit. This is a problem because it's basically you're trying to do a merge conflict. It tries to copy the state of the files that they were in the old commit and append it to the way they are now. Problem is I changed a bunch of intermediate lines and you can see if I go into the changes, uh oh, now it has two little uh, traffic cones next to it saying, oh we got some problems here. So I'm not a big fan of that. You can always undo the most recent commit which hasn't ever caused me problems unless you have unsaved changes. But I'm just going to discard those changes. Now what would git be without branching? So, up here you can say create a branch. I'm going to make a new one. Call it new. What a stupid name. Anyway, that made a copy from the master. Now I'm on that branch. Now I think that's a little easier than doing git checkout dash capital B new. And as you see, git branch tells you, hey, A, master, and I'm right on new. Little asterisk. Switching between instead of doing git checkout master. And the GitHub desktop communicates with the command line to know what state you're in. So right now I'm on master and I could change back to new. Git branch tells you you're on new again. And I switch back to master. Git branch will tell me you're on master. I found that's way easier than doing git checkouts. Just going to go back to new. You can make commits here. Notice the sync button is a publish button because it hasn't been published through the remote yet. Just going to make a commit there. Why not go ahead and publish it? I mean, it's debatable if you really like typing, all the power to you, but I find switching between branches with two clicks is a little easier. Now there is also this compare branch, so I have an older branch, let's go back to master, and you can say compare with A, which I haven't updated in a while. So A is the top branch, and then look at all the stuff I've done on master since I've committed to branch. Do compare, all it does is it just shows you intermediate commits that are different between the two branches. Not amazingly helpful, if you want to know what's really different, you should do a pull request. You can switch back and say, instead of comparing, just be viewing that. On the compare, you can say master with A, and you can say update from A. Notice that's blanked out, because master is actually more ahead than A. But if I do the other way around, I'm going to back to view master, fetch, check out A. Notice there's update from master, because that says, look here, here's master, and here's A. A is all the way over here with no commits. Here's all the new things. If you do an update from master, it will attempt to do a merge for you. And you can do this on your own computer. It just does a local merge without submitting a pull request, and I kind of prefer the pull requests. Also, if you made any local changes and forgot to save any, don't worry, because you'll go back and you want to switch, but it says, uh-oh, fail to check out branch. You have local changes. Got to commit them. But let's just uh, discard all these changes so I can switch. So right now I'm back on master. I'm just going to sync this. And as you notice here, I got these two files because what happened was I made a new branch and I committed the git ignore on that one, but I forgot to commit it over here. So let's go and ignore that file, go into the git ignore, repository settings, and say uh, ignore all those files there. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a pull request from the desktop app. And I'm going to make a new branch called B. How original. Let's do some cleanup over here. Save that. Commit that. Go ahead and publish it. And I'm going to make a pull request. See this pull request can be merged automatically and send pull request. Then you go and view it on github.com. 
opens the pogo quest. I know this is safe, I'm just gonna merge the pogo quest. And go back here, switch back to master, and do a sync. And what do you know, if you look at the history more detailed, this last one says, hey, merge pull quest number nine. Hooray. That was easy, wasn't it? Of course, the dreaded thing about pull quest is, what if you get a conflict? And that's where I think that GitHub Desktop can come quite in handy. Now I'm going to intentionally try and make a merge conflict. I'm going to go make a new branch, call that fail. Now I'm on here, I'm going to change the last nine to be, I don't know, like, fail. I'm going to go and commit this on the new branch. Okay, I'm going to publish this. I'm going to switch back to master. I'm going to go change the same line, which is something you should never do. Be like, yo, this is, this is the master's line. I'm going to go commit this and sync. Now the problem should occur when I go back to this fail branch and try to do a pull request. Uh-oh, cannot merge these automatically. Going to send it anyway. View it on github.com. Now you see, these cannot be resolved. Not the end of the world, though it can seem like it sometimes. Open this in GitHub Desktop, say open the app. What does this do? Not that much. All it will do is switch to that branch if you don't have it. And since I made that branch, it doesn't do me any good. But if you're fixing somebody else's pull request, it'll make the branch for you. So they also recommend view the command line instructions. I don't actually use these because this is if you don't have the branch. So what I do instead is I go to master. Now you do have to use the command line a bit to double check. You can say git branch and say, yep, you're on the master. I'm going to do a git merge fail, which is going to bring anything on fail into master. And just say, uh-oh, there's a problem. Go here. This is where GitHub Desktop comes in, because you can be like, oh, wait a minute. If you have a bunch of files with a bunch of problems, it'll tell you exactly what line to look for instead of looking for control F and looking for all these head markers. This tells you exactly what to fix. So I'm going to say, which commit do I want? You know what? Both of these suck. No one was right. Save that. Now I'm going to go in GitHub Desktop, check the file. Still has the little exclamation says conflicted. Now right here, this is going to show up as a normal commit, so I recommend giving it a good name. Notice this commit tells you exactly what it did. It merged the pull request, so I'm going to write something similar. Say commit to master, but don't press sync yet. Because that will do a pull and a push and end up with the same kind of conflicts again. Go into the command line, you can run a git status to make sure. You're ahead by two commits and do a git push. I refresh the pull request. You notice, hey, it's actually been merged. I go into my commits. You say merge pull request from, but notice how it just shows up kind of like a normal commit. So that's why you want to make sure you don't just like say, I'm fixing a merge. Try and make it similar. And if you go into the old pull requests, you can see 10 closed and you can look fail branch. That one was successfully closed now. That's my process for fixing merge requests. Could probably do a little safer not merging to the master directly, but I hope I've convinced you that there are certain things that the GitHub Desktop app is really good at. It's not good at everything, but what it does, it does well.